We need the death penalty for the same reasons we have always needed the death penalty. Uh, there are some crimes for which anything less is just a travesty. It's time to look behind the curtain and see what all of this is costing California taxpayers. We often debate the death penalty on moral grounds, but this November, California voters will decide the fate of the death penalty based on its cost effectiveness. Attorney Paula Mitchell authored a study finding that California's death penalty is too costly and ineffective. Over the last 32 years, it's cost California taxpayers about $4 billion to have the death penalty, and over that period, uh, 13 executions have been carried out. The SAFE initiative would replace the death penalty with life without possibility of parole as a maximum punishment. Former San Quentin death row warden Jeannie Woodford has been the key advocate. It takes so many years for inmates to exhaust their legal appeals and uh, inmates sit on death row um, while we spend millions and millions of dollars on each of their cases. The massive expense is partly because San Quentin itself is so massive. There are over 700 prisoners now on death row, making it the largest in the country. California uh, is responsible for housing 22 percent of all death row inmates in the country, and we've been responsible for carrying out 1 percent of all of the executions. Mitchell says that the death penalty costs $134 million over and above the cost of life without possibility of parole because death row inmates get special attention, like single cells and extra legal resources for their never-ending appellate process. That means more attorneys, more experts. They also have two trials instead of one. They have a guilt phase trial and a punishment trial. Then they start their direct appeal process, which now takes about 10 years before the California Supreme Court uh, decides whether the conviction should be affirmed or reversed. We need to speed up the review process. We are currently spending far more than we need, both in time and resources, reviewing claims that have absolutely nothing to do with whether the guy committed the murder or not. Legal director of the Criminal Justice Legal Foundation, Kent Scheidegger, says California should look to other states to remodel the system. In Virginia, they executed the DC sniper six years after the crime. Now that's a case as complex as they come. One of the dangers of, of this idea that we should just hurry up and speed things up is that it could result in cases where someone who isn't guilty or who didn't have a fair trial being executed. All across the United States they found uh, many people on death row who were actually innocent of the crime. And the last person who left death row uh, in 2011 as an exoneree had been on death row in Texas for over 20 years. So I think it's kind of a myth that it's quicker in other states overall. We would need to spend almost $100 million more per year to so-called fix the system. And we just don't have those kinds of resources. Scheidegger agrees that capital cases cost more, but says we need the death penalty because life without parole just isn't enough. I don't think life without parole is sufficient punishment. We shouldn't be letting people off easy uh, based on some kind of uh, excuse-making mechanism. We should hold people responsible for what they choose to do. Life without possibility of parole is a very harsh punishment. And um, it's cheaper and it provides for public safety because we have very secure prisons and we have a, California has a really thorough uh, classification system. So inmates are placed in the right custody level so that they don't harm each other or staff. The cost of housing inmates for life is still a huge expense. But most death row inmates are housed for just as many years as those sentenced to life without possibility of parole. In that same time period that 13 inmates were executed, over 80 have died of other causes. The average time on death row in California is now approaching 30 years. So we have more inmates on death row who've died by natural causes or by suicide. Especially because there have been no executions since 2006. The holdup has been the arguably cruel and unusual method of lethal injection, and bureaucratic hurdles have prevented any sort of resolution. And if and when this is resolved, it would take over a decade to execute those currently on death row. We would have to carry out five executions a month, every month, for the next 12 years, just to carry out the sentences for everybody currently on death row. And in that meantime, we would have added another two to 300 prisoners to death row. So. That's something that voters and taxpayers should think about. Is this something they want to see happen? An execution every few days for the next 10 years? 
Woodford says there are far better ways to use these resources. If we're really concerned about public safety, we need to put money in preventing these crimes, keeping police on the streets and solving unsolved crimes, and um, not spend our money on the death penalty, which is really, it's really a hollow promise for people. You get a lot more for your public safety dollar if you can resolve some of these um, homicide cases. This measure does divert funds, $30 million a year for three years, towards solving crime and rape cases. And even taking this into account, the total savings is still estimated to be around $150 million per year. We're only taking a small portion of the savings for the sole purpose of solving unsolved crimes. The $100 million fund created by this initiative is really a ploy uh, to try and get votes from people who would not otherwise vote for it. Scheidegger has questioned the initiative's legitimacy as well as Mitchell's research. The numbers should be considered very, very skeptically. I asked her uh, to share her data and calculations so that they could be checked over, and she refused. Her email response says that her sources, facts, and figures are all there and publicly available. There has been a strategy that sort of worked over time with voters and taxpayers to say, we just can't figure out how much it costs. There's no way to know. We can't put a price on justice. Um, basically, sit down and shut up. Don't look behind the curtain. There's no way to figure this out. California wants the death penalty. We've always wanted the death penalty. This has been their, their strategy, and it's, it's worked. Until now, when everything in California is on the chopping block and the death penalty is no exception, Woodford is optimistic about safe passing. When they initially asked people to sign, there was some hesitancy, but when they gave them the cost, how much it was costing the state of California, um, and that um, when they understood that life without possibility of parole is a very real punishment, then they gladly signed our petition.